Now, the answer to this question is going to shock you guys because there is an actual answer to this, a valid answer to this. But many people have come to the conclusion that God is evil because he's allowing evil to continue to reign within our world. Well, check this out, guys. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, it says this. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So God... When he created the world, clearly after the fall, after Adam and Eve's sin, this is what is reigning within the hearts and the minds of mankind. Fast forward, Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9, it says that the hearts of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And the heart is deceitful above all else. So we clearly see, guys, that mankind has an issue. All right? And when we talk about evil... We cannot separate evil from mankind. And that's the problem that we have right now. What we try to do, guys, is we try to separate and make a distinction between evil and mankind. And we just can't do that. The evil that is perpetrated and manifested upon our earth literally comes from the heart and the mind of man, according to the scriptures and according to reality. Every intent of a man's heart literally manifests or produces some type of evil in some sort of way. We are not the victim. And the problem is we try to victimize people. And we can't do that because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, regardless of who you are. So we have all contributed to the evil that exists within our world. The same evil that we are accusing God of not getting rid of. Not understanding and not knowing that if God was to get rid of this evil, he'll literally have to get rid of each and every one of us. Now, the question is this. Well, no, not really. Why would God have to destroy everybody? What is, why doesn't he just destroy the really, really bad people? Well, that's the problem, guys. The way you define evil is not the same way God defines evil. You got to understand, guys, that we're dealing with the all-holy, all-righteous God. God's perspective far exceeds our perspective. You got to understand that, guys, that we're dealing with the all-righteous God who cannot allow any sin to go unpunished. Now, in light of what we know, what is God going to do with the evil in our world? Because at the end of the day, guys, evil needs to be dealt with. Hence why Judgment Day is coming. Hence why we're going to have a Judgment Day. But also why... God sent his son to die in order that the wrath of God that was supposed to be poured upon you and I for the evil that we have contributed through our hearts and our thoughts, literally the evil that exists within us because it has been passed down to us from our forefathers, Adam and Eve, we are without any excuse. But nevertheless, God sent his son and his wrath has been poured upon his son so that his wrath may not be poured upon you and I. And that is what God has done in order to deal with the problem of evil, literally exchanging our evil for his righteousness, literally giving him our evil for his goodness. This is called the great exchange, guys. This is what God has done for you and I. So what has God done regarding the problem of evil? God has sent his son to die in order that you and I may be rescued and freed from the bondage of evil so that at his second coming, those who desire to be with him and free from the bondage of evil will be with him and will be freed from the bondage of evil, not just within our hearts and our minds, but also externally. So God one day is going to terminate all the evil in the world once he receives all those who belong to him. Anyways, guys. Let me know if this helped you understand or comprehend or at least, you know, simplify the question as to why it is that God allows evil to continue to reign. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe as well. You already know what's our love. Until next time, take it easy. Peace.